what can the Cavs do? Do they have the firepower and we just haven't seen it yet? You know, they lost game one and game two last year by a combined 48 points, Mark Jackson. This year they've only lost by a combined 41 points. But why do we feel so differently about this series than maybe we did at this point last year? Although I think at this point last year we thought the Cavs were done as well. Yeah, I got to agree with you. I think last year we all thought the Cavs was done after the way they lost the first two uh, two games um, in massive fashion. And then you look at this year and you think, oh, it's the same. It could be the, it can be the same thing because when you look at when you look at it with all seeing all, we can use the analytics, we can use everything we want. But as long as LeBron James is healthy, you know, you talk about firepower. You know, LeBron James, if you compare him to firepower, LeBron James is a, is a tank. He's a cannon. So he kind of makes up for lack of firepower. But I do not agree with Coach Ty uh, saying that they need to speed the temple up. I, I was a little, I, little, I took a step back and really, and really thought maybe I misheard him when he said he needed, that they wanted to speed the game up. I don't think you want to speed the game up, I guess, to go say words. I think you want to slow it down a little bit and try to, try to bully ball them, try to overpower them. And, you know, and I heard that I kind of took it back. But as long as they got LeBron James, they still got a fighting chance. They do. Uh, and, and so far, what has surprised you in the first two games? Because they haven't been close, but they haven't been competitive either. Um, it seems that there's a wider gap than we anticipated. Uh, when you watch the first two games, it just looks like a bad matchup. And why didn't we see that this was a bad matchup entering the series? Well, you know what? I, I think – what I've, what I've been seeing, I've been seeing uh, 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 Tristan Thompson not having an impact he should be having. Um, in first two games, I think he has a combined uh, around, uh, at four points or eight points and eight rebounds in two games combined. You know, that's unacceptable because he is, for me, I think he's, he's a, a valuable turning point for the Cavs in their favor where he can kind of bully ball, kind of beat people up, kind of impose his will. You don't have to give him the ball. He's going to go get it. And I think the Warriors have to have, to have him on the board as somebody who can be a game changer. Um, but I think, to me, I think LeBron James, I hate to use this word, but I, I truly believe LeBron James in both games actually got tired in the second half and the fourth quarter where I think he got a little fatigued and he wasn't able to get to the rim like he was um, in the first half of both games. And he's been making his perimeter shot, but I think if you pay close attention to the games in the third or fourth quarter, He's really been settling for that perimeter jump shot instead of overpowering people. Mark Jackson with us. Of course, you hear him during the Sixers season on Sixers pre- and post-game live. Uh, played for the Golden State Warriors. And, you know, um, I-, I can agree with that a little bit because last year he's not running around with Kevin Durant. This year they don't have a guy on the roster that can really run around with Kevin Durant. They need LeBron to play Durant on the other end. And I think that is another thing that's kind of – uh, affecting this series here is that Durant uh, is causing LeBron to exert a lot of energy on the defensive side of the ball. I agree with you 100 percent because you know no matter who you put LeBron on, he has to. It's going to be he has to work a little bit more. You, you know you can't put him on Steph because he's a primary ball handler. You don't really want to put him on Clay because Clay moves off screens too much. You know I, and and Draymond Green if he's guarding Dre, you know he has to. Dre is great with getting a rebound and pushing the ball. And he's always moving. So, and you know for a fact what he's going to kind of work on defensive end. He's going to get if he's guarding Kevin Durant. So you know it, it's it, he, he can't hide him. You cannot hide him unless they put Javale McGee in, um, and then you try to make LeBron guard Javale McGee to the D to give him a rest on the defensive end. So I think that he with the, the load he has to carry on the offensive end and the low he has to carry on the defensive end. I think that's the turning point with them adding Kevin Durant. It makes um, one less person on the floor for the Warriors that you can actually put LeBron on to hide him. Yeah, that and Kyrie Irving has been disappointing. I mean, he looked like he was coming out at the end of that Boston series. We saw him last year in the NBA Finals with some really big games. Uh, but he has been disappointing. You wonder if he picks his game up, can they win two games in a row, or is this Warriors team too deep? I think the Warriors team, um, uh, they think they're big four. You can't call them big three. They're big four. is maybe a little too much. But one thing, Kyrie is a great He's a clutch player. He's a great uh, battle battle tested player. He's he's very good um, uh, scoring the ball. But one thing for me is that he he did a lot of a lot of shooting contested shots. You know, he did a lot of breaking his man down one on one, getting to the basket. But primarily his shots was him shooting over defenders' hands. And even though he was making the majority of them, 
that wears on you eventually. And I think if, if I'm Golden State, I'm coming and saying, hey, just don't let him get to the rim. Let him keep breaking us down, shooting contested shots. We'll live with that all day. Yes, he's making them, but eventually his leg is going to give out because it's a lot harder to shoot over contested hands after you try to break a man down. What do you do with Kevin Love if you're Cleveland? He has been pretty good, uh, but it hasn't mattered. And he seems like he is the square peg Raul hole here. He has really – uh, a tough matchup on the defensive end of the floor. Uh, he hasn't provided, an, I mean, enough offensively, uh, but he has not been really an X factor in this series. He seems like he's def- more of a defensive liability. Well, I, I kind of got to disagree with you on there. Um, I think, you know, his numbers, you look at his points and rebounds per game. I mean, if he's a liability, then a whole everybody in the NBA wish he'd be a liability. The average Joe walk around wish <laughs> he could be a liability. You know, I'm, oh, he's, he's scoring. No, that's stuff. what I'm saying. He's scoring. And he's rebounding. He's yeah, he is re- He rebounding. is rebounding. I'm saying mm-hmm. he's doing yeah. well on the offensive side of the ball, and it doesn't seem to have mattered. But it seems like defensively he, he kind of causes a problem. Uh, he's always like kind of the odd man on who does he defend. Well, I, I, I'll think if you come in this game three and pay close attention to this game, the, the Warriors are not coming, oh, where's Kevin Love? Let's attack him. No, they're just doing the offense. Mm-hmm. They're moving the ball. You know, sure, whoever has a, uh, has a shot is shooting the ball. The only one that's really going one on one, and only two, is Kevin Durant. But Ke- I would say Kevin Durant has had some easy buckets. Just they're eight down the lane for dunks or wide open shots. But uh, Steph Curry's really been the only one who's been actually breaking men down and shooting over them and getting to the basket. But the Warriors just moving the ball. So I don't necessarily think Kevin Love is a liability. I think the way that the offense is ran at Golden State, that is able to get offensive shots that are uh, are, are good shots. They're able to swing the ball. They do such an excellent job of getting a ball from one side of the floor to the other. But then when Cleveland comes down, it's just an ISO one-on-one type of basketball. I think Golden State has a lot of weapons, but just they, they, they not just have a lot of weapons. They're moving the ball, making Cleveland work on both ends of the floor, both sides of the floor, and getting the ball from one end to the other. So not just have great one-on-one players, but also to have great ball movement. It's not just Kevin Love, it's Kyrie, it's LeBron, it's everybody has to play defense for 15 to 18 to 20 seconds on the shot clock and, and be moving their feet. This is very hard to defend a team that has that caliber of weapon and that kind of ball control and that ball movement. I think one thing, Mark Jackson's with us here. Mark, I think one thing that Cleveland maybe underrated was the speed of the defense on the perimeter that Golden State has. Their perimeter defense, I think, is causing a big problem in Cleveland's offense. I agree. I agree. Well, Golden State is fast. You know, the fast, you know, Petrula is, is a 6'11 big guy in there. But other than him, you know, you have uh, four perimeter speed guys. Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, Clay, and Steph or have some feet. They have quickness. They have quick hands. So even though if you move the ball and you get an open shot, they're able to recover quickly. And then we see normally when you play against teams, they might have two, maybe three quicker guys on the a, on a wings guarding players. But when you beat a guy off a dribble and you pass the open guy, they're so quick with the other four they're able, able to recover out. So when you beat that guy, you run into another guy. The speed they have is just is just causing havoc. And the only way to me that Cleveland stands a chance is to slow the tempo down and bully ball them. Let LeBron go off, go off the you know force double team, put LeBron in a post but give him different looks. You know, and Tristan Thompson has to get people in foul trouble with them trying to keep him off the offensive glass. Yeah, and you know because that he's the, he's he's the key factor to me. Yeah, and Mark, we've seen that LeBron has been as good as he can be a triple double in both games. I mean, he's been unbelievable. Uh, and it seems that obviously Kyrie has not been great, but J.R. Smith, Tristan Thompson, Kyle Korver. You know, one of those guys is going to have to step up. When you're at home, that changes. One of those guys should be able to step up tonight and give them more. I agree. They need that. I don't think it could just be one. I think, out of all, I think LeBron has been LeBron. Oh, yeah. And I hate to say that because LeBron has spoiled us with greatness that, you know, he's he's almost averaging triple-double, and we, we're, we're like, oh, yeah, he's, he's okay. I mean, <laughs> you know, let's think about his numbers. He's put incredible numbers. And Kevin, the, Kevin Love has given him – he's been very productive – uh, points, rebounds, but I think they need, and Kyrie is, is struggling up and down, but I think they need t- at least two more players to give him something. I don't think it could just be Tristan, and it could just be uh, 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 Shumpert or JR or Kyle. I think they need at least they need at least a big three, a Kevin Love, LeBron, Kyrie, but I think they need two other guys that give him something. Other than that, I don't think their firepower can maintain and hold up against the Golden State Warriors. 
So I think that it's not just one or two guys. I think they need a collection of guys to step up and help the big three to at least have five guys get them double figures and points. Hey, Mark, uh, we all know Durant is, uh, by the way, uh, playing at an unbelievable level. Uh, he, he's a guy that probably would win the MVP of this series uh, if it ended right now. Curry's been outstanding. But what is it that makes Draymond Green maybe the most important player on this team? Because he didn't even play that great the other night, and they were still able to win. But something tells me he still had something to do with that win. He's a very unique talent in this series. He is because one thing about he is the the, 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 the the he is to me is a throwback. He's a throwback with one thing with his hustle. His I need to do the little things to help this team win the big things. So his re, one thing he does well is his rebound. His get it and go. Um, his he gets the ball and he pushes the ball so quickly up the floor, and he's a mismatch, mismatch nightmare. He's about six seven. You know you put a guard on him, he literally goes in the post, overpowers for rebounds. If you put a big on him, he beats him with his quickness. You know, the only person on that floor to me that can guard him is is uh, LeBron James, and I think Richard Jeffs can give him something on that. But other than that, he's a mismatched nightmare. You know, he's not a great knockdown shooter, even though he will hit it if left open. But his ability to be able to distribute the ball, to have four other guys cutting off the ball with him handling, and his capability, he's capable of guarding one through the five, literally. Yeah. And, and, you know, unless you have a Shaq out there, unless you have a, a Joel Embiid who's somebody seven foot two, two eighty, he can guard the, the typical uh, five-man in 2017. And you switch, he can guard the perimeter for a point guard. So, I mean, he, he is so clutch for them as far as defensively. He can guard every player on it. Uh, he can guard every player, and he can do things on offense no matter what is ask of him. You need somebody to hand the ball to be the point for now for this possession. You need somebody to come off screens. Get, I mean, he's that guy. That's why I think he is so important to Golden State. Uh, Mark Jackson's with us, uh, former Golden State Warrior, former Sixer, Comcast Sports Net Philadelphia on Sixers pre- and post-game. And So I'll ask you, Mark, do you think that this Golden State, if they win this thing and rip through this, is good for basketball? Is this, you know, Will this uh, be a good thing going into next year? Because this year – the anticipation for the series started when Durant signed with this team. It was, all right, it's going to be the trilogy. But what do you look forward to next year if they sweep through this thing? You know, to be honest, if they literally sweep the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think, you know, it's a what do we do now type of thing. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be very biased with you. I'm a big guy. I was a power forward and center my entire career. I look at the game. So if I'm, I'm a big guy, you know, watching the game, I'm like, man, I need to go find another sport. Man, I need to be offensive lineman or something. Or <laughs> in. Because if, you know, the, the is copy league, every league is a copycat league. You know, if, if somebody sees somebody winning with a certain style of play, they're going to try to duplicate that. So if Golden State goes out and sweeps the Cleveland Cavaliers, then I would expect to see a lot of teams trying not to have a post guy on the floor at all. You know, we, we know, I mean, literally, you know, I think the teams go out there to try to win with five guards. Or and people say, "Oh, that can't work." But Golden State's proving you different because your uh, Green is not a, a post guy. He's a, he's pretty much a guard. He's a tweener that they actually playing at the guard. Kevin Durant is the size of a big guy, a post guy, but he's playing. He's a two guard. So I think it's going to be it's a copycat league. You see a lot of teams trying to duplicate that style of play, but we have to keep in mind the other teams don't have five basketball <laughs> geniuses out there, and they and it's going to be a lot of ugly basketball. And as far as them sweeping through. You know, a lot of teams would say, well, we can't. We know we can't beat Golden State. I wonder if a lot of teams, let's, let's just go tanking. Let's go to tank route and just try to tank because they say, well, we know we can't compete with Golden State, so why even try? Well, Luke so Walton. I hope that doesn't happen. Luke Walton admitted today, uh, the Lakers coach, he said, this is a good time for teams to have a slow rebuild. Basically saying, we know this Warriors team's going to be good for the next three, four, five years, so we might as well take our time and build slowly because we're not beating this team. It seems that the league yeah. is resigned to the fact that they can't close the gap on this team, and that is not good. That is horrendous. That is really bad. If you have a bunch of teams out there trying – I hate these words, trying to tank. You know, you get a bunch of teams out there trying to tank. That's not good for the league. It's not good for the um, for the people who are paying money to come watch you yep. or buying a league pass. You know, it's just not good. It's bad for business. It's bad for basketball. So, unless you're the Spurs, you know, I, many, a lot of teams are going to go that route. Or the Clippers, 
a lot of teams are going to go that route, especially the West, man. We can't compete with them, so why even try? You know, and, and then that's, like you said, that's bad for the spread of the sport. How many, I'm hoping that's going to happen, but be honest, I can see it happen. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you that teams are just going to throw their hands up and say, look, it's uh, – KD and LeBron's world for the next three, four years, and we're just kind of hanging out in it, and we'll let you guys battle it out. How many more runs do you see for them? I mean, because they've made the finals three straight years. Do you see them making it another three, four years? I mean, could they conceivably make the finals seven or eight years in a row? Um, To be honest, I think, you know, what's going really to be interesting. Um, this summer would answer that question because, you know, they're going to have Kevin Durant and um, Steph Curry. I believe it's this summer, next summer, it's going to make some, have to make some, some sacrifices financially in order to keep that team around. Because, you know, with those four guys, uh, meaning uh, Steph, uh, Clay, Draymond, and Kevin Durant, you know, it, they don't have – it's not enough salary cap in any sport that can sign on for those guys for what they're worth. So I think, it, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what Kevin Durant and Steph Curry decide to do with their deal. And if they really do do the – Tim Duncan wrote and sacrifice a ton of money. I mean, we're talking 50, 60 million yep. easily each player in order for them to keep that team together. You know, so I'm, I'm, if they do that, then this team can make at least another three to four year run. <laughs> God uh, being injury, but they can make a run at least another three, four years. Okay, Mark Jackson, you are Chris Paul. Do you make the 200 million and stay with the Clippers or? Do you go to San Antonio? Do they give – does Chris Paul joining the Spurs close the gap enough to throw away all that money? First of all, other than money, I, I I can't see Chris Paul doing it. I love him. But I can't see him turning away that extra money because he is the president of the Players Association, and he fought really hard to get that new CBA. Oh, that's, an interesting, uh, that's an interesting That's an interesting wrinkle right there. Exactly. That's great for the players, the owners, and everyone. So I, if he gives up that ton of money to go to the San Antonio Spurs, it's going to be a bad black eye for players because then all the owners are like, well, hold on now. And they're going to use Chris Paul. Oh, he's the president of your league your, um, organization. Just took a major cut. So everybody should. So then the next CBA comes around, <laughs> that's, going to be a, that's going to be a very important key factor to a team's negotiating with players. So I don't think he'll do it for that reason because he doesn't get so much heat yeah. from the players. And he would he would immediately have to resign as the president of the Player Association. He couldn't he couldn't even entertain that and still be the player association president. He would have to resign that 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 thing ASAP. So I don't see him happening. I don't see it happening. Would that close the gap enough? I mean would that make would that make the Spurs yeah. um no. It doesn't because you need uh, Aldridge. Aldridge, I think Aldridge proved this this play out what what kind of play he truly is now, yeah. not what he was, but what he is. So that that wouldn't work because they wouldn't have enough. They uh, would the system, the system and the coach can close the gap a little bit. To be honest, it just it's just not enough. It's not enough firepower. All right, how about if a Butler or George ended up in Cleveland? Does that close the gap for Cleveland to the Warriors? Yes, if Jimmy Butler ends up with the Cleveland Cavaliers, that closes the gap, and I will put them in favor of the Golden State Warriors. Whoa, next year. all right. So we got I something will put to them look in for. Favor, but, but I don't see it. We're I don't the, see it. Exactly. <laughs> oh, no. But I, we're like, just like we're saying, we're looking for something to look forward going into next year. This that's looks true. like a series that's not competitive. If I go into next season saying, what am I watching this series before? Because I know we already said this year it was going to be Cleveland. Next year. We might think it's the same two teams, but may not think that final will be competitive again. That's not good. So we're looking for some scenarios to get us there. Uh, yeah. Mark Jackson, draft's coming up. We're still a little ways away. But if you had the third pick right now and you were Brian Colangelo, who's your guy? Uh, uh, <laughs> if I'm Colangelo, I'm trading the pick. Ooh. They're, I'm trading the pick. You call it that Sacramento. There's some uh, hey, buzz you, about five and ten yep. for three, right? I'm trading, and let me tell you why. Because if they're really serious about playing Ben Simmons as a point guard, then to me the, the value is in the point guards. And if you're serious about really playing your 6'11", 240-pound guy as a, a, a real 24-hour point guard, then I would trade the pick because the value is in the point guard for what, what are the 76ers need. So I'm trading it, trying to bring me um, – and I'm going to overpay for J.J. Redick. 
yes, I'm going to overpay, give him six, seven, ten million dollars more a year than any other team's going to do it, and I'm bringing in JJ Reddick. If you're 100 percent sure that you're going to play Ben Simmons at the full-time point guard. Yeah, peanuts. They've been saving money for years. It's time to start spending some of that money and give Mark we Jackson a raise over at Comcast <laughs> Sportsnet. Uh, hey, all right. They moved a game to half court. I can 20 and 10 right now. Hey, Dwight <laughs> Howard says he's going to start expanding his game. He wants to start being a stretch five and shoot the three. Yeah, because it's, it's sexy. It's sexy <laughs> if you're a big guy to start shooting threes. But once you start shooting it, your game diminishes in the low post. I don't know that. I don't know that Dwight Howard has the three-point stroke uh, that uh, it, it takes to be a consistent uh, stretch five in the league. But uh, hey, more power to him. Mark Jackson, who wins tonight? Believe it or not, believe it or not, I think Cleveland wins tonight. I think Cleveland wins tonight, but I think um, this will be the only game they get. All right, uh, great minds think alike. I think the same way. I had Cleveland. I had Warriors in five with Durant as the MVP. And I agree with you. I think Cleveland, this is the one they get. And uh, well, that's it. Uh, we'll see. But uh, Mark Jackson, Comcast Sportsnet, Philadelphia, as we get closer to the draft, we'll catch up with Mark some more and uh, get some more of those hot takes on the uh, draft, what they should do at number three. All right, pal, we'll catch up soon. Yes, great talking to you. Talk to you soon.